Hey, well, good evening, Internets. It's me, D.P. Knuton, for another edition of Bookward Bound, my 301-day live stream journey, consecutive days for 301 consecutive days. Let me say that again, 301 consecutive days working on a new book that you saw the cover of just a second ago called Nonfiction Brand, Discovering, Crafting, and Communicating the Completely True, Completely You Brand. You already are. And uh, I'm working on the book every night with your help because you're the one, you're the reason I'm actually down here after hours working on a book when I should be binge watching something on Netflix. So thank you for that. But really, I'm doing this as much for myself as for you. But I do want to say thank you for helping out. And uh, what I'm going to be doing tonight, <clears throat> some nights I'm writing, some t some nights I'm outlining, some nights I'm designing the book interior, etc. Well, tonight what I'm going to do is actually do something that I worked on, I think, last night or the night before. And it's right here in Scrivener, the program I'm using to write the book. If you watch that uh, live stream, you'll, you will recall that I wanted to plug in a quote f that I remembered from Scott Galloway on the Pivot podcast that he does with Kara Swisher. And I, <clears throat> I, I remember it very clearly, but I couldn't find it. Uh, you know, I literally had to go back and listen to probably 25 or 30 episodes of the Pivot podcast, but I finally found the quote. And so the quote I was looking for said something along the lines of, when I meet people and they wave from across the room, they've seen my videos. When they come over for a handshake, they've been at one of my presentations, or they've been at one of my presentations, that's plural. But when they start talking to me like we're long lost friends, they've been listening to my podcast. So I want that basic idea, but I actually found the full quote which I've um, transcribed here. Hold on, can I get this sized up? You should be able to read that, right? The medium really is the message. I'm curious how people respond when you read your articles. I get a letter. So, um, there's something, the medium really is the message, and there's something about the intimacy of being in someone's ears where they feel as if they know you and are forced to listen to you because they don't have the distractions of visuals. Uh, and I, so I, I want to grab... Let's see. I'm going to grab this, this whole thing because I, I like the... And I'm going to plug it in Scrivener. Um, I'm going to keep the old quote because it's a lot tighter. Oh, and see what this does. Got to give it an, an ellipsis uh, and a period, ideally. Uh, I want to make sure to get the, the right smart, um, what are they called? Smart quotes, shift option, blah. That's double. Option or just option, duh. there we go. And that should have an ellipsis too, so I'm plugging that in. Now I have to make sure they're all the right um, font and everything and Scrivener's got some hotkeys that can allow you to quickly do stuff like that I think I want to indent this or give it all because it's a quote I'm going to make it all italic and that center looks dumb I wouldn't mind giving it um I do that. Yeah, I can kick it in. 
just kind of give it a a block quote treatment a little bit. Take down uh, the font size. Come on. To something pretty small. Got my font panel over here, which will allow me to make the font size quite a bit smaller. something I'm gonna just bold myself so I'm gonna get rid of the bolding on it to podcast because I don't want to do too much bolding so there my uh Paraphrase. I can get rid of and uh, all right. So let me get rid of that. Get that out of the way. And each time they listen, they get closer to you. Um, I love this quote from. Uh, from one of my favorite podcasters, from one. Interesting. Quote from one of my... Cho... And then I'm just going to give it a citation style. And I'm going to go. And I need to look up what episode that is. So I'm checking my iPad right in front of me. And that was 10, 18, 19. 10, 18, 2019. I'm going to bring this in just a little bit more. Well, in... Ultimately, when I take this over into Word at, at the end of me doing working on this stuff, um, I'm going to have to redo a lot of this rigmarole. But at least I got the actual quote in. Because one of the things that I'm really concerned about in writing a book is not ripping off somebody else. I don't mind referring to other people or doing quotes like this or... Uh, maybe even take a concept of someone else's book with full crediting of that person and the book, citation of the book. You know, I'm not going to have footnotes, sorry. Um, this is not an academic exercise. But if I am going to take someone's ideas or idea and feature it in my book, I'm going to give them full credit, including the name of the book, who wrote the book, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, and also typically a strong recommendation that, you know, this person's really smart and they wrote some incredible stuff, including this. So this is my way of saying pivot podcast. He's absolutely right. Podcast listeners turn into friends. Da, 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 da. Write down the names of your dogs. Right, Pablo Killian? A nonfiction. Uh, so this is a shout out to Pablo Killian. Oh, of course I didn't show you all this stuff. Duh. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, what I did in here was I plugged in the quote. I made it italic to make it stand out as this is not me talking. It's Scott Galloway talking. 
um, and moving it in, you know, moving the margins in a little bit just to kick it away. So it, if you're reading it, it's almost like, this is what DP is writing, kick it in like this, this is what Scott Galloway said. It's very clear who's saying what. So I'm not trying to take credit for it. I'm just trying to surface his great idea to a larger audience because I love me some Scott Galloway. The Big Dog is an incredible guy. And if you don't listen to the Pivot podcast with Kara Swisher, you should. And he's got a brand new podcast out called The Prof G Show. Check that out as well. Um, I think he's a tremendous, tremendously smart guy. And cannot recommend him enough, frankly. Um, what about the there part? I wrote that. So I think this section is good. I'm really, really happy to have found that quote. It did take a lot of due diligence, literally. I listened. No, and I'm serious. I went into my podcast player on my iPad and on my iPhone because literally I was walking my dogs listening at double speed I'm just trying to hear waiting for the uh, the podcast oh listen 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 and eventually I found it so yay for me all right um so I, I want to write a section about Scott Galley I don't know how will I do that because uh, let me think about that Yeah, I'm going to think about that. Where are we when it comes to the section worse than imposter syndrome? Because I think worse than imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome, why I like it. Expertise learned. I'm going to center this. I think it is centered. No, there you go. Center. It's worse. Expertise laryngitis. Media scarcity. If you don't own it, it's not yours. Okay, so I need to get rid of this page because I incorporated it in the previous one. Expertise laryngitis. you don't own it, it's not yours. But let's fill that prescription and get your personal brand. So let's fill that personal brand prescription. Get that nice alliteration going there. Got to remember to kick it over to this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Personal. Oh, come on. Brand prescription and get your voice. You need to. Let's get your what? Your voice back in, into shape. How about into shape? Your experience. Let's call it experience. Expertise. Experience voice. Simple. We're calling it expertise, right? Expertise laryngitis. Get your expertise. Because, okay, this is this is me being the word guy. Sorry. Do I want to use the word experience or expertise? And my answer to that is anybody can have experience, whether it's good or bad. But if you have experience, what do you develop? You develop expertise. So the higher level function that you want to tout and share and post about is ex your expertise, not necessarily your experience. 
because, again, your experience may be somewhat limited. For example, I have never worked in certain sectors when it comes to marketing. Does that mean I have absolutely no expertise within those areas? No, that's not true. I have video expertise that could apply to that area. I've got writing expertise that could apply to that area. I've got all sorts of audio, you know, radio expertise that could apply to that area. So it's really not a matter of are you experienced in that area. It's do you have the expertise that you can bring to that area no matter where you've worked before. And that's, I think, what a lot of people have a problem with. They think, well, I've only worked in this industry sector my entire life. Therefore, I must only work in that industry sector. To which I say, no, man. You need to take your expertise and apply it wherever you end up. And guess what? I just came up with a new section that I have to write, which is about exactly what we're talking about. Oh, my Lord. This is how it works when I come down here to work on the book. I think I'm going to do one thing, and I end up coming up with a new section that I have to write. Uh, and I think it probably goes right about here. So I'm going to start a new section. It's about your expertise, not your experience. Expertise, that which, oh, see this, I'm liking this. Yeah, baby. I am liking that idea. Because truly it is. It's, you know, so many people, I don't have any experience in automobile marketing. It's like, yeah, but you have experience in marketing. You know how to do a TV spot. You know how to do a media buy. You know how to come up with a cogent, smart social media strategy. Now just apply it to cars or a car dealership or a Jiffy, a quickie lube shop, whatever. It does, you know, and that's what I think copywriters understand more than anybody else because as a copywriter, you're expected to write for whatever is coming down the pike, you know. So you get a brief for uh, some of the heaviest stuff I worked on was uh, a, a bioluminescent genetic assay products. Uh, there's a certain company here in Madison, Wisconsin, that makes products based on luminescent jellyfish DNA that can tell you whether you have leukemia or not because it bioluminesces under certain light or whatever. Um, I know nothing about that. I mean, I have a little bit of... No, I don't have... Who, who am I kidding? My experience in biology is related to one college class that I did okay in, but it still screwed up my GPA. Um, so I'm not an expert in that stuff. But... I had to write ads for them. So what did I do? Did I apply my PhD experience? And no, I used my expertise in marketing and the English language to communicate the very difficult concepts of bioluminescent gene assays. Yeah, crazy, huh? But, but that's the way it works. Copywriters have to have an, uh, a knowledge base that is kind of like 15 miles wide and one inch deep. Well, that, that's me, one inch deep DP or one inch deep. Just call me deep. Anyway, it's not about your expert. It's about your expertise, not your experience. Um, do I want to write this tonight? No, I don't. I want to come down totally fresh and just jam it out. And to do that, I'm awarding it a red flag, meaning, dude, you haven't written anything here. Um, the blue flags mean this section is pretty much done. It may need some editing and proofreading, and it may not be in the right place in the book, so it might need to move around a little bit, but at least it's written. And then I've got all this red stuff. The majority of the things I've got in here are red. And it hurts. Well, 
9 bits. What's the difference? I can write about that pretty easily. A lot of these up close and personals are people I'm considering writing about. Um, Christian Aussie guy. But some of these guys have got to get back to me. Uh, the Roger stuff. Where was Roger Wakefield? Or did I write about him already? I think I may have. Yeah, I did up here. The Roger stuff. Yeah, I, I haven't done the Roger Wakefield episodes yet, so I can't plug in those episode numbers. But at least Roger's in there. And how many words? I've got 1,300 words on him. That's enough. Although I instantly see a space that shouldn't be there. That's one of the things, too. When you're writing a book, you get so tired of looking at pages, you got to move on to other stuff and then come back. And the second you do, you'll see the error. You'll see the mistake. You'll see the thing you have to fix. All right. So I'm just keeping my eye on the clock because I only want to do about 30 minutes tonight. I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, that whole thing is pretty long. Like, oh, I got to make a note. Contact Jay Bear. Hey, Jay Bear, I need to get you on my podcast so I can interview you and get great material for this book because I want to write about you, dude. So contact Jay Bear. That would be another big thing. Keep a notepad right by here because you're going to go, oh, yeah, I got to do that. I got to do that. Got to do that. Branding. What's doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a lot of quotes at the beginning of these sections, you know, because that, that's a nice way to kind of ease into it and add some credibility to a book. It's a stylistic thing. Personal brand, power tools. I'm going to do a mini write-up about each of these services or products that I use. Video. Expertise, breadth of brand, personal. Pop culture. Equinox, EQ. Uh, I want to see what shape that's in. Discovering your own powerful and multiple. Do a search. Okay, that's yeah, I really gotta read through this. Like that, and 
actually highlight it so that I hopefully remember. All right, so obviously I got a ton of stuff to do here, but the thing I'm learning is that if I'm not feeling it, don't force it, you know. It'd be different if someone was paying me or that I had a hard publication date that other people were paying for and stuff like that. But the fact is, I'm going to be self-publishing this book uh, come January 1st, 2021 via Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing platform. And the cost for that is zero. <laughs> this is the thing that most people don't get about that. You up 